Welcome to the Catholic OCD Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Nolfi. Today, it's a very special topic. Death of a Christian. How much should we mourn the loss of our loved ones who die in Christ? And how much should we celebrate the death of our loved ones who die in Christ? We're going to go over this deep and emotional topic today, so stay tuned. This is Nick Nolfi, and this is the Catholic OCD Podcast. So today, what I really want to do is take this opportunity to dedicate this video to uh, somebody special, my grandfather-in-law. So I have a beautiful wife named Amanda. And at this point, we've been married for 18 years this month, 18 years. And today, her 92-year-old grandfather, Big Mick, uh, cool, cool dude, cool Italian dude, you know, tall, Tall guy, slicked back, white hair, always wearing the black, you know. Italians, we love black. Very morbid people sometimes. Or we just look good in black. I don't know. But a cool cool guy. Spent time with him. Uh, Loved making homemade wine, sitting in the driveway, eating cheese, and uh, had his garden. And uh, just a cool guy. And, you know, uh, so this morning at 1.10 a.m., he uh, departed this life. And he was a man of faith. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have his funeral coming up. So, Big Mick, Grandpa Mike, uh, you know, hope you're watching. And uh, pray for eternal rest for you. And that uh, through God's grace... Uh, just excited about you entering into the beatific vision. So with that being said, uh, how, how do we handle death? As Christians, you know, St. Paul is very clear. We don't mourn like the unbelievers. I mean, picture if you have no faith, if you think that, you know, we have no purpose and you just come to be by coincidence and you really you have no more value than the fly or a tick. And that when we die, you just go into the ground, story's over, that's it. You could see that'd be a really mournful thing. And we, though, like St. Paul talks about, we, we have this hope. We know about the resurrection. We know about... Uh, you know, we don't enter into a state of soul sleep. It's not a biblical principle to have the idea that when a believer even dies, that we just go like unconscious, like, you know, kind of like the Jehovah Witnesses believe, uh, that you just are unaware of anything until the resurrection. That's not true. And this is why when Jesus speaks about in the Gospel of John about uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's, he he. He tells the Sadducees, see, don't you see, God, we call God the the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living, not of the dead. Jesus' point is to show how Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are alive somewhere. Even though they're not on earth, they are alive. It's not just this uh, basically uh, graveyard coma that we go into. When we die, Christian or non-Christian, we enter in what's known as the particular judgment. Those who die outside of Christ, those who die not in the state of friendship, uh, those who die in this life of, of mortal sin, you die, you go to hell, directly to hell. Don't pass go, don't collect $200. But we who are in Christ, when we die in the state of grace, in the state of friendship with Christ, then when we go, 
Christ judges us, and there is no condemnation for us. There is no eternal condemnation for those who die in a state of grace. Now, some of us, uh, the, the process of, of Christ perfecting us on this earth, uh, some of us, boom, right in to the beatific vision. Other of us, others of us, through Christ's mercy, he finishes the job that he starts with us, and he's going to perfect us. And he's going to make it so when we enter into the beatific vision, when we look at the face of God, that's all we want, that's all we desire, and all of the deformation of our soul will be totally healed by the great physician, Jesus Christ. But even when we have this faith and even when we have this hope in the resurrection, this doesn't mean that when a loved one passes that we don't cry, we don't mourn. It doesn't mean that we don't go through this, uh, this, this state of sadness. Of course, we miss these people. And what happens is they go from this reality that we can see and we can touch, and they enter into the state of our hope. We have this hope that we'll see them again. You know, we have faith that we'll see them again. But we have to go through this period of, of waiting. In, in today's episode, I really want to, first of all, give condolences to anybody who suffers this loss. If you're going through it right now, my heart goes out to you. May God grant you mercy and peace and comfort during this time. But I also want us to be aware of the good things that await the Christian who dies in the state of grace. I want us to be aware also that we have a God who sympathizes with our suffering. Now, one of the things I want to go over is a couple things I want to try to cover um, number one is going to be the story of Lazarus. Uh, this uh, event that happened in the three-year ministry of Jesus is perhaps one of the most famous events that happened. Let's put it in perspective. Uh, there is this family of Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. These are not strangers of Jesus. These are his friends. As Jesus would do his traveling during this three-year ministry, he would often stay with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. He would stay at their home. Well, this is a point in Jesus' ministry where Jesus knows that if he goes to Jerusalem, they want to kill him. He's reached that point where he has made too many people in high power uh, angry, and they want to end him. They want to kill him. He knows this. And they're away from Jerusalem, and he's with his apostles. And this all takes place in John chapter 11. But uh, Jesus tells his apostles, ah, got to go to Jerusalem. They're like, Lord, how do you want to go there? I mean, you nuts. They, they probably didn't say that to Jesus, but they were like, are you sure? <laughs> you know, they want to kill you. And he says, our, our friend Lazarus has, has fallen asleep. And they say, well, Lord, you know, if he's asleep, you know, if he's sick, good, let him sleep, let him rest it off, it'll make him better. And Jesus is saying, no, you don't understand. Lazarus is dead. We got to go back. Now, this is a really neat thing, because uh, I believe it's Thomas, who they know Jesus wants to go back, they know the danger, and they just say, the apostles just say, let us go then and die with him. You know, if, if he's going to go there and they're going to kill him, we're going to go. We're going to die with them. I mean, that's the commitment these guys have. And they go back to Jerusalem. Now, Mary and Martha have, while Lazarus was sick, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure they're sending people to try to get a hold of Jesus. Can you find Jesus? They're praying that Jesus will come while Lazarus is sick. Before it's too late, will he come? Will he heal him? You know, we're good friends. I mean, he heals people he doesn't even know. Surely, he's going to come and he's going to save Lazarus before it's too late. And when Jesus goes and he finds them in Bethany, um, when he goes there, uh, you can picture everybody is surrounding the tomb. Some people are in the house. There's people that are mourning. You know, just women dressed in black, wailing out loud. 
when Jesus goes there, Martha comes. And you got to remember, Martha is the sister who she's always busy, busy, busy. She's trying to clean, serve at the table. You remember why her sister Mary is just at the feet of Jesus, listening to every word that comes out of Jesus' mouth. So Martha is more of the, you know, the, the practical one, uh, you know, more of the responsible one, we would say, in a sense. Uh, she comes to Jesus, and she, she knows, like, Lord, like, if you would have been here, our brother wouldn't have died. You know, you could have did something. And she goes, but even so, even though he died, you know, we still have hope. And Jesus tells her, you know, Lazarus is going to rise again. Lazarus will rise again. She goes, I know. I know, Lord. Lazarus will rise again at the resurrection. She's saying at the end of time on earth, at the final judgment, when Christ comes back and there is the resurrection of everybody, the good and the bad, the sheep and the goats, the just and the unjust, she's saying, I know at this point... Lazarus will rise again at the resurrection. This is one of the great verses in the Bible. Jesus looks right at her, and he says, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. You see, because Christ goes into the grave, and we enter into Christ, and Christ resurrects, we get to resurrect with him. We rise by being in Christ. And Christ tells her, I am the resurrection. Now Martha's going to go. She's going to get her sister Mary. You know, Jesus is here. Mary's going to come out. And I want to read this here. And this is from the Gospel of, of John, chapter 11. This is verse 32. And it says, When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. Now, you have to picture this. Mary's coming. This is a close friend of Jesus who could just sit at his feet and listen to everything that comes from his mouth. You know, picture her. I, I imagine her looking at the face of Jesus, you know, uh, just like one of these young girls you see staring at the Beatles. You know, you picture Mary in this relationship she had of such good friends. She's angry. I mean, you could feel she's angry if you would have been here. You could have did something but you weren't here. And Jesus, remember, Jesus not only is not only has a fully divine nature, but he has a fully human nature. He gets tired, he gets he 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 gets um worried, he feels emotion, and Jesus gets perturbed here. He he gets distressed. And when they show where Lazarus is at, it says this is the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. While we go through loss of loved ones, we understand we have a God who weeps with us. He feels our pain. This is why he wants to give the world eternal life. And for those who join him and die in a state of friendship with him, he does give eternal life. Well, we know the story. Jesus says, roll, roll away the, the stone. And they say, oh, Jesus, he's been in there for, for days now. You know, he's going to stink. It's going to stink so bad. And he says, roll, roll the stone away. And as you picture everybody looking at Jesus and everybody's like, what the heck is this guy going to do? And he cries out in this loud voice after he prays to God the Father, saying, like, Father, I, I thank you for hearing me, and I know that you always hear me. And he's going to cry out in this loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And you have to wonder what people thought of when they looked through the shadows and you just saw this figure coming out of the tomb, leaving death and entering into life. That is the point of Christianity. 
Christianity, even when you're on this earth and you become a Christian, and through you receive justifying faith and faith, hope, and charity infused into you, and this all comes through fulfillment in your baptism with Christ, when this is done, you go from death into life, from darkness into light, and Lazarus comes to life. Now, I want to read this. This is uh, from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. This is in section 110, and it's on the meaning of Christian death. Because of Christ, Christian death has a positive meaning. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. That's a, that's a quote from St. Paul there. The saying is sure. If we had died with him, we will also live with him. What is essentially new about Christian death is this. Through baptism, the Christian has already died with Christ, sacramentally, in order to live a new life. And if we die in Christ's grace, physical death completes this dying with Christ, and so completes our incorporation into him in his redeeming act. Now, this is a quote then from... St. Ignatius of Antioch, who we know was fed to lions, it is better for me to die in Christ Jesus than to reign over the ends of the earth. Him it is I seek who died for us. Him it is I desire who rose for us. I am on the point of giving birth. Let me receive pure light. When I shall have arrived there, then I shall be a man. When you're a Christian, part of of your duty as a Christian is actually dying in a sense because we've already died. Our old being has died in the waters of baptism. Go read Romans. This is what St. Paul talks about. We enter into Christ's death. Just as Christ died on the cross, we enter and we share in that death. And if you share in the death of Christ, then you get to share in the resurrection of Christ. St. Paul also talks about how, you know, we long to be out of this body. We long to leave this world to go and to be in the presence of God. And when we enter into the beatific vision, no pain, no suffering, no sickness, no illness, we understand totally that God is our ultimate good that brings us all happiness, and we then are perfectly happy in heaven. I want to close with reading another verse from St. Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, when St. Paul says, What eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who who love him. You can't even fathom what God has prepared for you when you die in the state of friendship with God. When you die in this state of grace, we, we think that we can picture the goodness and the happiness of heaven. You can't. You can't fathom it. No eye has seen this. No ear has heard about this glorious thing, it hasn't even entered into the mind of the human being what God has in store for those who love him. We need to make sure that we live our faith so that we die in this state of friendship. We need to make sure that we die with Christ. We give our whole beings to him and that we die with Christ so that we can rise with him. This is Nick Nolfi in the Catholic OCD podcast. And uh, may God have eternal rest and peace, grant eternal rest and peace on all of our loved ones who have passed away. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Until next time.